today on Anime Soiree, we have Mason, myself, Kyle, Will, and a boss. We'll be talking about Dr. Stone and uh, none of the manga, so just the 24 episodes that are uh, created to anime. We'll be talking about our thoughts on them. And uh, all I've got to say, I really, really like Dr. Stone. I think it's really, really good. Um, I think uh, science is pretty cool mechanic for an anime that I've never seen before. And uh, yeah, I think it's sick. Yeah, I agree. I just love seeing the slow progression as like they carve out like more and more space, like using just their intellect and also like brawn in like science and shit. Um, and you know, like I love how it's it's like intelligence, it's science, it's like diligence, like that kind of shit that is actually what moves the plot forward and uh, gets Senku a little bit closer to reviving all of humanity. I actually like when you said diligence. I actually really liked how. Senku like kept kept like reiterating the how long science takes. Like he's not just like popping these things out of nowhere. He's like, uh, like straight up saying like, okay, this will take like a year to do. Like get your put your try hard up pants on. Like buckle down. This is gonna take a while. And that's like something you don't see in a lot of like especially like movies or like TV shows. It's like, uh, they just do it like instantly. A lot of stuff takes time. Yeah, I, like- I really like. Oh, no. Um, I just I just like how it like uh kind of strays from the stereotypical shonen uh you know protagonist idea of like someone who's like relying on like strength to like uh you know move the plot forward. Um, because like you know from the very beginning in this anime, like Senku is relying on like you can tell like Senku's a genius and like he's relying on his brains and like they make the antagonist actually somebody who like relies on strength. Um, and like it's like the mind versus like you know. The, the muscles debate and um that's Bond i think something I, yeah that's mm-hmm. something i think i really enjoy <laughs> mind versus <laughs> muscles <laughs> that's funny uh, i mean you're, you're definitely right but that's really funny kind of off that uh <coughs> i like how they like like it's like the brawn versus brain thing but also uh the villain isn't dumb like he like he's very good at like predicting what senku would do like understanding like a next move like they're like okay here's what we have to do we have to do a, a preemptive attack and then it like goes to the villain he's like okay here's what they're probably gonna do it's a preemptive attack um, yeah that's true everything is like super like logical if that makes sense for like an anime like you know it's like obviously sci-fi and like a bit of fantasy uh yeah. and like for like how out of world the the plot is like they really really do um like use the the rules of the world to make like really good decisions and that's definitely like super cool because a lot of times uh sometimes like anime plot lines i'm like okay (laughs) it's kind of either ridiculous or it doesn't quite make sense and everything they do makes a lot of sense like weird to say because it seems obvious um that a show's plot should make sense but uh it's weird seeing this show compared to others and how logical the next step is yeah and also, uh, Boss was talking about how it's like different than normal animated protagonists. I really liked how it's different from a lot of just shows in general, where you have a really smart character, and almost always that smart character is like constantly talking down to people and saying like, "Oh my God, I'm so smart!" And why are you? You can't understand the science. Like, what are you doing? Whereas Senku's like, "Oh my God, you don't understand the science? Let me show you. Like, come into my world, baby. This is science. It's so cool." And he's not like, "You're the stupidest person I've ever met." It's, it's like it was very interesting like switch on the uh the classic super smart guy character yeah and i think a lot of that is that like senku recognizes from the very beginning that like he might be like the smartest person on the planet as far as he knows but like he cannot do everything by himself like he knew from the very beginning like from when he was revived like he needed to he needed to depetrify like taiju because like he was not cut out to do a lot of like the physical labor that is required to kind of like jumpstart civilization like he wants to do and like as the series goes on like we are introduced to like new characters that are like that that each like have their own role that you know regardless of like who they are like the the little kid like going on like her like reconnaissance missions because she's small and shit like the old dude who like has like a lot of experience like crafting shit so like he he like knows like how to like he has like the know-how how to make things like just seeing how like 
everyone like fits together like to form a society like that that's just dope like that Senku recognizes that and that he's not like like you said like not like just talking down to people like he, he recognizes that in order to have successful society you need to be able to bring people into the fold but yeah i like that about the show yeah i mean i like um the big thing about senku that i liked was like you know i'm i'm a sucker for op characters in anime like i loved uh Escanor and Seven Deadly Sins, Saitama and One Punch Man. And like, in a sense, uh, Senku is kind of an OP character, but he's just different from all the ones we're familiar with because it's all in his brain. He's not, he's not gonna like 1v4 like crazy guys or anything. Just, uh, he'll just outsmart you, build the telephone and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> also, I think like, uh, like just some of the scenes in the show just were like portrayed so beautifully um like one that really sticks out in my mind is like when they discover like light or like invent light you know um because like i like we never lived through that part of history like ourselves right so like we like like for us like light is like such a normal like everyday thing like we just like turn on a switch and like there it is but to see like the progression from like you know never for like never being able to see in the dark or like work in the dark or like you know just like the dark like kind of um enveloping you um like to like having some sort of like way of like kind of traversing that um i just thought that was so exciting and, like i don't know like I don't, I don't like find science like always like super exciting but like this show definitely made it exciting for me sorry boss i, I mean kyle i'm pretty sure you're laughing at the same thing i was like yeah <laughs> uh, but i totally hear what you're saying i totally hear what you're saying yeah and and I, for for me it's like i do love science and i find science extremely exciting but like i love the fact that this show is basically like the most exciting and like it, it like it takes all of the good shit from like shonen tropes you know like it is like extremely like hot-blooded like you have like this constant sense of like the characters are getting stronger it's just like in in this show like how everyone gets stronger is like by like expanding society like progressing their technology but like seeing what the next goal is and like slowly working towards it and um that shit is like very like addictive to kind of like watch that loop of like all right like this is what we this is the next invention that we need to make and i love it when they like draw out like the like the the flow chart of like okay we need this and this to make this which is like one of the materials that we need to get to our like final goal like for for like when they were making the penicillin or like the cell phone like shit like that and just seeing like slowly but surely like every episode like we get one step closer to our final goal and then when we finally get there it's just like so satisfying because like you see all of the hard work that had to go into it great i really like the um just the uh the world generation kind of like they're talking kind of like what kyle's talking about i think senku is like the perfect character for like this challenge and um i feel like that's that was just like a really good choice by like the, the writers of the show to make this world and put specifically senku in it um i feel like you know it's just like a challenge that uh even when they get to you know a more modernized uh society it's like technology gets better um as they work harder um there's always going to be new challenges and i feel like in terms of uh longevity for the show and like for me just thinking of like okay if they made like 500 episodes of the show even though that's unlikely like i'd probably watch them because i always think what senku is doing within this world is really really interesting and um, I think that's pretty rare. I don't think there's a lot of shows where you could recreate, um, you know, uh, these kind of challenges that they're doing uh, over and over again. And it'd always be interesting. So uh, I'm curious to see what happens with the next season as well. I think they left it at like a more like plot driven uh, aspect. A lot of the things we saw leading up to this were just like, OK, like this is Senku solving problems in this world, which is like, yeah, it's a little bit of plot, but it's kind of just like, you know, really setting us up to actually like have a resolution with um what's that guy tusaka is that his name yeah, tusaka. um so I'm, I'm curious to see how that actually goes because i've really really liked everything so far but it's been fairly simple in terms of plot i think the world's really good i think the characters are really good they've done a lot to establish senku's side and like i can't wait to see what the villains look like more we've only seen a couple of them you know, how uh, Tusaka, you know, has, like, developed and how his interaction with Senku goes in, like, their their fight or whatever Senku decides to do. So 
I'm really curious to see what happens next. I'm really, really curious. I think what they've done that so was, far is really good. That was definitely my biggest gripe with the show. It's not like a huge gripe, but like I wanted to see more about uh, Sokka or Susaka's place. Um, we didn't. I don't think that you get really get to see his like actual kingdom until like the very end, and you don't get to see Taiju and his girlfriend until like the very end, and it's really just like them standing there or whatever. I wanted to see it maybe like a bit more of them. Like it didn't have to be too much, but I just felt like I kind of forgot about them sometimes because I was so invested in what Sight Senku was doing. Then the next episode would be like, okay, the uh, magician comes and be like, oh, okay, well, I forgot about what's going on in the other village. And it's just, I don't know. It just felt like they kind of almost leaned too heavily on the science sometimes and not enough on like the overall plot. But I think it was a lot towards like advancing. Uh, or like building up for the later seasons, which I can ex- excuse for sure. Yeah, I mean, I have read ahead in the manga, and um, and I uh, just so you know, like in terms of like scope, I guess I think there was like uh, sixty chapters that were adapted for for this first season, and uh, I think there's like a hundred and sixty that are out right now, and it's still going strong. So we'll definitely get like, I mean, assuming that the anime continues to be successful and get made, which I assume that it will, considering it's like you know, pretty popular, um, there will definitely be at least um, a couple more seasons. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it is only the beginning, and, like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I read a bit of the manga, and it seemed like there was some stuff that wasn't in the anime, like, a decent amount. Like, I only read, like, I think five to ten chapters, and then I just watched the rest of them in the anime, just because I wanted to see a bit. And, uh, like, that scene with, like, uh, Senku and, like, the pulleys, and then making, like, the race car for that chick like that wasn't in the anime was it i don't remember that yeah there's like i don't black remember that black stuff that's that's in uh that's in the manga that's not in the anime but there's also some stuff interestingly enough that like they added in the anime to kind of like help explain things better like um just kind of w- which i kind of like like they, they there was like a part in the anime like where um i think it's like before that like confrontation that they have with sukasa at the um uh, at, like, the hot springs or whatever, like, where, like, they first use gunpowder or whatever, um, when, like, Senku use or, like, someone uses a crossbow against Tsukasa, um, and in, like, the manga, they kind of, like, when they use the crossbow, they kind of, like, show in, like, one panel to the side, like, a flashback of them making the crossbow, but, like, in the anime, they, like, actually, like, make the crossbow, like, beforehand or something, so it's, like, actually foreshadowing it a little better, so, like, I think that that's kind of, that that's probably the kind of thing where it's, like, when he was writing the manga, he probably just like was like, "Oh, like I need to have him use a crossbow here. Like I'll just like, write a little flashback or whatever." That's like the kind of shit that you have. Like when you're making the anime, you have that like foresight where you're like, "Okay, like we see that there's like an awkward flashback a little bit forward in the manga. So like, why don't we just put a scene here so that there's not an awkward flashback?" That's a like, neat point. Yeah. So I, yeah, but um, but the the I, I like the manga. Like the art in the manga is so good, and I do think that the anime does like a really good job of like capturing it like a lot of like the spirit of the art um but there's just like so much detail in like the manga that you know doesn't really carry over um but yeah overall it's like the the art i would say is like a definite plus for the show um even though it's not quite as good as the manga i'd agree i saw a couple panels that i thought were really cool and i'm like yeah anime really yeah one in particular is like the one where they like they do art or they, they not they do art they do light for the first time where it's just like Senku and Chrome, like, looking at, like, this light, and it's just, like, the entire panel is black, except for, like, the light that's, like, illuminating them, and it's, like, so fucking sick. Um, yeah, the art is really good. It's also really good in the show. Uh, uh, I will say, I, I really like the, um, the dilemma within the show between, like, Senku and the, the villain, how it's not just, like, oh, the villain, um, he's just evil, and he wants to kill the villagers or something but it's it goes like deeper than that like he wants to destroy all the petrified people before senku can res them to create his own sort of world and uh i think that's a a very interesting dilemma than what they what they could have done yeah i agree i i like i really like the dynamic the kind of like philosophical conflict between like tsukasa and senku um because like you know it's like senku the way i see it, it kind of like he feels like it's not his place to choose like who would get revived and who doesn't like he feels like that's not like something that he can morally do um and he just sort of says like okay well i'm just gonna like the goal is to get get society back to where it was and then like then it's you know society's problem or whatever but like Tsukasa, the way he sees it it's like um 
you know, like I want to like shape society and like this sort of like, I don't even know, like an anarch, like anarchist sort of like no progression. Like everyone just sort of like lives with nature. Um, and like, he is going to like wreck statues of the people who he felt in the old world were like taking advantage of people and shit like that. So it's like, it comes from like, you know, like, and he has like a backstory, like to kind of like explain like why he feels that like society used to be really fucked up. Um, and so it's like, he actually like does like have a reason for it. And it's like, not like, you know, it's not just like blatantly evil, like mustache, mustache twirling villain. Like yeah. he actually kind yeah. of like has like, he has like points that he's trying to make. It's just like, they don't really, you know, map onto reality like that well. And Senku kind of like realizes that. And he's just sort of like, you know what, like we just need to progress humanity forward. And that's, that's the goal. And I love it because Senku's my one, boy. One thing like though, I, I, I agree with like everything you said. One thing I would give props to like the creators for is that like even though like Sukasa's like mission, you know, is like obviously like when you compare it to like how Senku's approaching things, like not necessarily for the greater good, the his own good that he's created, like the I, the vision he has for society in the future, like can be made defensible, right? Like at least from like some perspective of like individuals. So I think like I I honestly really like the fact that the authors like took time to like approach it with like not just like oh he's gonna go around killing people willy nilly but like he's like purposefully trying to target you know like adults that have like wronged people like in their lives or like and stuff like that. So they give him like like not a very large one but they still give him some to- type of like moral compass you know yeah by exactly. which he's like guiding his actions with um and I think that's I, that that made it a lot more like a, a realistic like you know, villain, um, as opposed to just like, like some almighty villain that's, uh, you know, has, is up to no good. Yeah, I think that you're right. They do like a good job, like establishing him as the villain. And then even when they have that conflict, like on the volcano, um, and they like kind of show that like to Tsukasa could have been like, uh, um, like Senku's like friend and they like show like flashbacks of like, his Senku's really memories, like yeah, when they, like, interject him into, like, being their friend, I thought that was, like, really, really, like... Cool. Yeah, that was dope. And it was a really good job, like, humanizing him, and uh, he was, like, clearly respects Senku, and Senku clearly respects some element of him, which is uh, pretty good. It makes the conflict a lot more interesting, because you really like both of them, even though I think, you know, one of them definitely has a, a kind of a baseless argument for killing people. I just genuinely like him. And, uh, like, Taiju, like, even his initial reaction was like, oh, this is a good guy, uh, until you get to learn more about, like, his, like, internal philosophy of, like, how he sees the world. So, he's a good villain. Yeah. He's definitely a good villain. I like him a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Kind of going off that, just in general, I thought the characters were really good. Um, I liked how they did all the village characters. They all seem very unique. Um, especially, I liked Magma's arc. Magma's arc was pretty interesting. Like, I mean, it's like a very general, like, uh, I think I've seen in a couple animes where you have, like, initially he's a villain, but then he becomes a good guy. Or, like, yeah, he, he turns around his ways after he sees what the goal for Senku is. But I still really liked it. Um, I liked both the daughters of the chief, or I guess the former chief. Um, they were interesting, and, like, the entire story about the uh, the foundation of the um, village and the characters that we only see for, like, two episodes, the astronauts, I found myself like caring for them. Like when you find out, like, oh shit, this person's about to die. Like I was like, oh my god. Like I actually, like they did a good job developing the characters enough where I actually cared for them. And I thought that was, uh, I give definitely props for that. Yeah, that yeah was, I agree. That was very cool. I, I like I like the diversity of the villagers. Like in the fact, like that, that they all have like different roles to play. Um, which is like you know, like I said earlier about like Senku recognizing that like you need a lot of different people to like make a society and like progress technology and shit like that um but also i like the way that like all of the villagers like how they get brought on to like the like senku's like kingdom of science idea like how they kind of have to like convince them that it's like in their best interest that like all of this shit will like make their lives better because like at first you have like all the villagers who are like who the hell is this like outsider he's like probably trying to trick us like like we don't we don't know this guy like why should we trust him but then they like make the ramen and then everyone's like, holy shit, like food, this food is delicious. Like, like we, we should follow this guy. Like he's just like making our lives better. And like the kind of like how you have like Senku like approach like different characters differently, like how like the one guy needed glasses and then like you give him glasses and then like now he can like 
fight for you and like you can fight better against like magma and that arc and everything um i really like how like it's what it is it, that that causes people to like join up with senku is like them just kind of like looking out for their own best interest because like that's what technology does like it just like makes it just makes everyone's lives better and so like once people realize that that like how could they not be on board um i think that's great i also like i like how um you know the show doesn't make it so that everyone immediately realizes technology is good right like yeah like the plot is technology is good but um for it there's like two specific instances like the first one is like when he initially senku meets chrome right um and like he like chrome's like i challenge you to like this like duel of like you know showing like our magic spells and like slowly like through the duel you see like chrome like understanding like holy shit actually maybe i don't know everything like maybe this isn't magic and it is explainable right um so you see like the slow progression towards liking technology and like believing in technology and then the second one is when um he initially gives penicillin to like the the like you know the the chief's like daughter um i mm -hmm. forgot her name um I think it's but, yeah yeah um when he initially gives her penicillin she gets worse, right? And the chief starts blaming him. He's like, dude, like, you just, like, made my daughter worse. Um, yeah. And, like, he's like, this is, like, not <laughs> what I wanted. Like, you know, you're, you're only making things worse. It's, like, clearly, like, technology has no base on it. But, like, later on down the road, you realize it was actually just, like, the bacteria that was, like, fighting in her system, like, helping her to get better, like, making her better. And then you see the slow progression once again of him, like, liking technology and, like, siding with saying, right? Um, so, I really like I really enjoy that it wasn't completely obvious to all the side characters that like I need to side with Senku, but it like took some convincing and like he was able to achieve that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. That was a cool part of the show. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I like how like in this show, like you know, like in, in so many shonen, like the progression of the show is the characters getting stronger, like physically. Um, whereas like in this show, there's like so many different ways that like the progression is shown, right? Like you have like the obvious one of like more technology getting discovered but then you also have things like you know more people like coming on board to like uh to to like the kingdom of science and like also like the pro the, the progression of like the conflict with like Tsukasa like I just think that like I like how there's so many different ways that show the progression uh as opposed to like a lot of shonen where it's just like you know I, I punch better like I beat up stronger guys um like I yeah I just I, I like how it but it still has that like progression that like I love from like shonen and, and shit like that. Um, yeah. yeah One element of characterization different. that like kind of mirrored Hunter x Hunter a lot was like when Senku, they had another flashback in like the earlier episodes where uh, they were talking about like a psychology test. And he was like, if you could only save your lover or your girlfriend, like, which would you do? Uh, and then he was like, everyone. Hard, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then he says, everyone. And then it's like, okay, like, okay, so cool. He was like, I'd look for the answer to save everyone I could. And Gon basically answers the same exact question the same exact way uh, to get into the Hunter exam. I don't know if you guys remember that, um, but I thought that was really cool because I'm like, yeah, that's how I know it. This is the main character because they're always trying to save everyone. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just thought that was cool. I'll yeah. Also, uh, Gon and Senku both look like Johnny Test. Which is pretty great. That's so. true. That's actually really true. <laughs> That's a good point. Johnny Test anime when? I mean, this is kind of Johnny Test. Yeah, anime. it kind of is Johnny Test. <laughs> this is more than Johnny Test. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Need a talking dog sidekick. So, guys, in terms of like criticisms, right? Like, this anime is like really great. Um, I just I have like one small one that I think like, you know, it didn't like ruin. Um it didn't, like, ruin the show by any means, and, like, it didn't take away that much from the show either, but I just felt like there was no, like, major, like, character development for, like, some of the main characters in the show. Like, like, Senku's a genius, and he can, like, do really great things with technology and, like, gather resources, and he's really intellectual, but, like, and this might just be just because there's only one season so far, and it, like, totally makes sense. Like, in other shonens, like, they also, like, take some time before they, like, develop uh, some of the characters. Um, like have like major development points for them but i don't know maybe i could have seen like if, if like maybe they ended the season with like a bit more of that that would have been a bit interesting but um that was like my only like like real but small criticism of like you know while i was watching the show 
I yeah. would say there's not any big development between the main cast, but like characters like Chrome or the villagers themselves oh, yeah. all developed, especially Chrome, developed a fuck ton. Chrome went from like bitch boy, like sorcery to like a scientist. <laughs> Dude, I love Chrome. Like, Chrome is probably my favorite character. Honestly. Cool. But we, yeah, Chrome is awesome. I, I kind of I kind of agree with the boss. Um, there's there's actually one one thing that um, one moment in particular that like when I saw it like the first time like really stood out to me and I was like, oh no, like this is this is like not good. Um, was like in the so uh, like after like Kaiju so so like okay Kaiju's like whole thing like the like what he was thinking about for like three point seven thousand years um, when he was like encased in rocks and shit was like oh man like I'm just gonna like confess my feelings to like this girl like Yuzuriha and um and, and that's what like that's what that's what's keeping him going like he's thinking about that that entire time so he like he doesn't like die or whatever um and he's just like willing himself like yeah I'm gonna live so hard so that I can confess my love to her um and then like when he like when he like thaws her out or, or like unfossilizes her or whatever he he's like no like I'm not gonna confess to her because like that would be that would be wrong like that would be like it would be too weird because like there's no one else that she could like turn to if I confess to her. So I'm just like I'm just gonna like not do that, and I'm just gonna wait until like society is completely revived, and then I'll confess to her. Yeah. And yeah. Well, like come on, like you like were literally like this was literally like keeping you alive for like three point seven thousand years, and you're just gonna be like, nah, like I'll just wait on that. Yeah. Like, it yeah. like they were like artificially like prolonging that like that development of their like relationship, like. Just till the end of the series, basically. Um, which, like, I didn't. I was like not a huge fan of. Um, but like, I'm kind of glad. Like, I, I was kind of like the the worry for me was like, okay, like this basically means that like whenever like Taiju and like Yuzuriha are like having a scene together, like there could always be like the sort of like, oh, like is he gonna confess now? Like, you know, could this be the time? Um, like they can kind of like just dangle that in front of you, kind of like to like just artificially make there be more character drama, where it's like. Really, like that's just like a bunch of bullshit. Like we all know that that's not going to happen. Like they're not going to. They basically already established that they're just going to confess at the end of the series. But um, I was kind of glad that they like kind of like pushed like Taiju aside for a while and like focused on like the science shit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like you know, I mean, his character is like not really like that interesting. He's basically just like strong. He 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 loves the girl. Like that's basically like. <laughs> yeah. like, like <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I mean, like, I'm glad yeah. that we got like a much better sidekick character in Chrome because, like, yeah. Chrome is like, like I said, like probably probably my favorite character. Like, I love, like, I okay, like I, I love the fact just that Chrome exists. Like, first of all, that like when Senku like shows up to the village, like there already is a guy who's like, you know, he's like he's like not <laughs> that like he hasn't like figured out that much stuff, <laughs> but like his mind's in the right place, you know? Like he's like, ooh, yeah. like himself. Like I figured out that like. This salt, if you put it on the fire, like burns like this, and like this salt, like goes like this. Like none of this is actually useful. But like, he's at least <laughs> thinking. He's at least thinking like Senku does. You know? Like he's thinking like he's like that experiment experimentation <laughs> mindset. You know. Um, and it turns out like he actually ends up like helping Senku a lot with like his like mineral collection and shit like that. And then like by the like by the end of the season, like um, I really like the 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 part where I guess this isn't. I don't know. This is kind of more towards the middle. But this is after like. You know, Senku's been like showing Chrome the ropes, and like Chrome's been like really like picking things up, and like he understands like how science works more or less. Um, where like Senku is like gonna go to um, get like the uh, what is it like this the the I think it's like I don't even know like the the the, the, the gas like the the poison gas. Um, yeah, what is yeah. It? I don't remember like what it's like sulfuric acid. Sulfuric, sulfuric acid. acid. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So like he's going to get the sulfuric acid, and he's like, dude, like chrome you got to stay back because like this is like really dangerous and like i like could die and so like we need someone to like make sure that like the spirit of like scientific progress like lives on and like you are like that person and like i, I mean he ends up going because he's like no nah, man like you're not gonna fucking die like we'll be fine um and, and like that's great and all but like just like the fact that like senku like sees chrome as like this like as like someone who is like continuing to like carry on the torch of like the scientific mindset like scientific progress because like the reason that we have science at all is because of people like him you know people who were just yeah. sort of like experimenting and fucking around like when people were like living in huts and shit like that's like the start of like everything that we have like today is because of people like chrome so that's why 
Chrome is the best, and I love him. Um, back to the Taiju thing where you said like we don't really need him. I think I disagree, but I kind of agree at the same time. Like I agree that he's not a very interesting character, but I think that makes it all the more reason that they could use to or they could develop him. Like there's so That's much true. room to develop that character. And I kind of didn't like the fact that they just dropped him. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they just like legitimately were just like, okay, well, see ya. And you're not getting mentioned to the end of the season, and it's not even going to be a verbal mention. It's just like, okay, yep. <laughs> like, there's so much room you can develop that. I don't know. Maybe he could have been in the tournament to fight for the village chief thing, even though I don't think he would have done it. That could have been a whole thing. Uh, I don't know. I think there's definitely room to improve there, but I kind of didn't like the fact that they just straight up dropped him. Yeah, that's a fair point. But I really that like was the... a little weird. I like the allocation of the season to really, really develop Senku and his relationship with the villagers. I know we kind of like talked about this for like five minutes, uh, like a couple of days ago, Will, where we just talked about like, you know, we wish they would have paced it a little bit more differently yeah, in terms definitely. of, you know, we have a couple of different groups here and we spend like 90% of the season with one of those groups and not Taiju and Yuzihara and then not with Tusaka. Uh, but I don't know. I think that it will, might have um, been a little bit confusing and it might not have been as satisfying of a conclusion for season one uh, if they would have had a lot more going on. So I think that it was definitely a risk. And, you know, the, the loss of them doing it the way they did with just emphasizing all their time with Senku, basically, is we don't really know what's going on with Taiju and we don't really know what's going on with Tusaka uh, generally. But I'm glad uh, the way that they developed, um, you know, the village and all that stuff. Like, I'm glad I know so much about them. So when they meet a resolution, like, I'll feel a lot more, uh, sa- I'll feel a lot more satisfied when, like, that village, you know, if, if they if they resolutes like happily or if they overcome Tusaka, because like we're talking about Mob Psycho the other week, like they just had like a clusterfuck of characters and heroes that are all fighting for the good side. But I just didn't understand, like, the relationships to, you know, either their abilities or to the main character or to Mob or to whatever. Uh, And so I feel like spending this season to really set the landscape for the good guys, I think, was a risk. But I I like it. I like it because I understand everybody that I'm rooting for. And I'm excited to see how they, like, meet their confrontation. So I think it was different. It was unique. But uh, I like it. One yeah. thing I want to think, add is, go ahead. Uh, um, uh, oh yeah, yeah. So um, with the, with like um, Senku's friends being at the other village with Tusaka, um, I see where you're coming from. It was a little weird. It's just like two or three episodes in, and then like two of the main characters are just gone for the rest of the season. But um, I think it's important that they had to do that because they spent the majority of the season working towards like communication like a telephone and stuff and i think that's what they're setting up for is that they're going to be given maybe the telephone to or the communication device walkie talkie radio to um his friends so they can recall information from the other village but uh i feel like they kind of had to separate them if they were going to go that route because you can't just have those two guys with you for the entire time and then be like okay, now go over there and try to be friends with them. You kind of have to, like, start that from the beginning. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I don't know. I think we could have gotten, like, just at least, like, a couple of snippets during that, I don't know, 20-episode gap where we didn't see them. Like, what are they doing right now? What are they thinking? Do they hear the news that they're sending uh, warriors or magician the magician guy over to the Senku's village? Are they worried for Senku? Like, just, like, any snippets of, like, what? It's with the theme, Will, of being yeah. in a stone world with no means of communication. <laughs> yeah, no, understand I understand mean, the like, outside world because you don't no, have I, I a mean, phone. It, it legitimately mirrors that, which I, if that's what they're going for, then I'm okay with that. Like, if they're like, okay, they're not going to hear anything about them, so you're not going to hear anything about them. And I'm but, joking. I'm joking. Yeah. No, but, I mean, nice. that legitimately could have been what they're like, going the, for. Yeah. I mean, I kind of think that the show is just sort of like, this is like saying, I mean, yeah, this is just Senku's story, you know, like it's like it's about Senku. So like if Senku doesn't know about it, like, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't know. 
Yeah, yeah but they did so much effort into humanizing Sokka. Like, it would be interesting to see him develop, because then I'll just care even more about the conflict. I know. Yeah, it's well, I mean, there is more after the anime ends. Like. I know, <laughs> I know. It's It's hard to value it at this point. That's why I said earlier, like, I'm curious to see, like, how they spend the remaining... Uh, time of this anime developing like the antagonist and other groups uh i hope it's not always all about senku um because i think the world that they built is really really unique and i think they could do some really really cool stuff with like a whole wide range of different characters and groups and stuff like that yeah so so guys i mean the question remains um you know what do you think caused the petrification to begin with right like why? Why do you think like society turned out like this way for like what like four thousand ish years? You know, everyone was turned to stone, and like somehow they're still alive. Um, you can revive them. I'm really interested. Um, I'd love between, to hear like your thoughts. I'm really interested between the relationship between humans and birds. I do not understand the bird part. I was like, that was the bird, the bird's yeah. just a testing thing. I think for testing like living beings. Or that's fair. That's how that's how I understood it. It was like, oh, this guy. Who, I think it's some random scientist dude. He's like, all right, time to fuck the world up or some shit. He's like, how can I do that? Let me petrify all living things, but first let me test the petrification on birds. So he's what if what if Senku that. like advances so much in science that he invents like time traveling and yeah. like he like actually is the one who caused this whole problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's something that I thought about. I was like, okay, wait, what if Senku is actually the cause of this problem? Like, that'd be wild. He yeah. is Dr. Stone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel no, like I, don't know. I feel like Earth might have uh, I think one of the better ideas I came with because Senku originally questioned it. It's definitely none of the ways that Senku listed because that would be lame as fuck if he listed a potential way that, uh, you know, the petrification happened, and that was actually one of the what, ways. What were the ways he listed? He said, like, them? virus, he said virus, like, world leader, or aliens. Like, or the like, alien one's, like, something I think about a lot. Like, a literally, a very advanced alien, like, a bunch of teenager aliens, like, out on a fucking drunk binge could just fuck <laughs> everyone up. Like, <laughs> I that would suck. I definitely think that the entire premise of the show is, like, an emphasis on, like, Earth and, like, nature. And I could definitely see some variation of it being like some kind of defense mechanism, either internally from Earth or externally from Earth, to stop humans from basically uh, sticking their dick in the planet and fucking everything. So I could see that. I think that's probably my most plausible guess is either the Earth itself is aware that humans are destroying it and then petrifying them so it can stabilize, or like somebody is in charge of Earth's, uh, you know, like, you know, it, it not getting fucked. Uh, by like you know us well i feel like it would have like i feel like there's some greater intelligence to it because not every like living thing was affected right it was like only humans that yeah, were, I'd like, agree. affected I'd agree. um and so that means like there was some targeting that happened um towards the humans um so i don't know i, I remember like thinking about like i remember like reading some sort of like dumb theory about nanobots i don't know if that's actually what's going to happen but um that's probably the thing I'm most curious about as it like like I definitely like still want to know like what happened to the kingdom of science like how did they progress but I really want to know like how did this how did they end up in this place to begin with yeah I think it'll be yeah. waiting quite a long time that's probably going to be a very very long ways away if, if the anime if the manga is still going they've I'm guessing they probably haven't answered that so it's probably going to be a while before. I mean I have no doubt that, that question will be answered by yeah. the end of the manga but it probably won't be answered at least completely concretely until the end of the manga, because that is basically like the mystery that was introduced at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Um, I kind of think like for, for what Griffin was saying, like, I don't really know how like a kind of like environmental reaction to humanity would work like thematically for the show, because I feel like like the show is not really super concerned with like the negative effects of yeah. technology. Like it's a little bit more like kind of like, blissful about like how like okay like if like humanity just continues to progress like they will eventually solve all of the problems that they may have created created like previously along their path of progression you know like i feel like the, the show is like extremely optimistic on that front like the the i mean i would say like the character who is like the closest to an environmentalist is sukasa like who is like the antagonist of the show i mean his 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 like you know, he's definitely not like an environmentalist. Like that's not his thing. Like he doesn't care about like 
protecting the earth but like his society is one that would extremely benefit the earth you know like or i mean like it wouldn't provide the same negative effects that yeah. humanity had in the previous society because they reject modernity well i mean we've seen in other anime right like the the protagonists like motives not necessarily being in line with like what the the quote-unquote universe or earth wants like in gurren Lagan, right like the the spiral beings are generally known as like problematic in relation to the anti-spirals right because they just have like you know like an element of evolution that like makes them like destructive more or less i know i'm like really really summarizing but i'm not saying it would be out of scope for a story in which you know the protagonist's goals might lead to a more destructive ending just for the sake that's of fair. humanity uh I don't yeah know, that's, that, fair. that's a little convoluted and then also i was saying uh that somebody could be monitoring more or less uh how earth is doing if that makes sense and because you know we saw like yeah. the test with the birds so i actually think that that's a lot more plausible that somebody is looking at earth um either within earth or outside earth and saying oh shit's fucked uh petrify bird test good human test go yeah <laughs> I, I could i could see it being someone taking action on behalf of the earth uh, yeah. or nature or something like that yeah, i could definitely see that some some scientist guy fucking around and Maybe it's Senku in the future, but I don't know for sure. Uh, I think it's just some scientist fucking around, and he's like, Earth is dying, and this petrification thing will solve it, so fuck it, let's do it. What's the meme? The Earth is dying, the animals are leaving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's him. The animals are out, dude. <laughs> Aliens aren't contacting. <laughs> it's the birds first. <laughs> okay. No, yeah, I mean, I don't know how I would... I, 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 would, I think that it would be pretty hard to pull off the time travel shit like well i would i would i would feel extremely skeptical if i if it was time travel like i'd be like okay like how are you going to handle this and it not be a complete clusterfuck but um you know we'll see we'll see how it goes <laughs> yeah thank you armin armin's watching yeah the planet is dying the government hates us the animals are leaving the aliens <laughs> are contacting us we might be alone that's basically <laughs> dr stone in a nutshell hey, armin. yeah they they are they are alone until they get to the village and then they they realize that they're not hundred percent alone. Uh, let's see. Does anybody else have any plot points they really really want to talk about? I do. Uh, one thing that kind of you know grinded my gears a bit that I wish was touched on a bit more was the healing properties of the petrification. Yeah. Because awesome. they touched on that right in the beginning with Senku getting killed, quote unquote, because he took a lethal yeah. blow to the neck, and then. The petrification, they even talk about it, they're like, the petrification healed your neck. It wasn't like, oh, the rock prevented my neck from getting broken. I distinctly remember them saying, like, the petrification healed them. And then they didn't really touch on that anymore. Kind of just left it at that. Also, I was kind of unclear. Was it, like, he just happened to have, like, oh, this one part of him wasn't petrified, or was still petrified? Or was it, like, he just threw some petrification on there and healed himself? I'm not sure, but they they did. He was cracking no, his neck I think, a ton. Before. I think that, that they were. Well, it seems like to me that he just had a rock there, like on the back of his neck to begin with. Yeah, like, um, was all that, that which was, was petrified? Uh, which was pretty convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. convenient. About it now, like it's like it's like okay, uh, Sukasa. Instead of doing that, he does he you know rips your heart out or something. Oh, you're fucked. Goodbye. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, I'm okay with it because, like, if he didn't get revived in that way, then the show would basically <laughs> be, be like people like just living in a village with sticks. Like, there well, yeah, wouldn't obviously. be any. <laughs> I don't. But, I think but, it yeah, just could have been done better. Also, yeah, also, I I, like it's not a hundred percent like free thought, of bump along the road. I thought like like okay like even if he knows right that he like even if he like accidentally leaves like this little rock on his like back like you know on his neck. Um, like, why wouldn't he have just removed that earlier? So I feel like it was kind of intentional. Like, he knew the, like, the properties of this rock and, like, what the value is and, like, using, like, the bat key or whatever on it. Um, and, uh, as a result of that, he decided, like, consciously to keep the, the rock in place in case of a situation like that. I, I, I don't know. I just thought he was, like, being smart about it. Like, even if it was an accident at first, like, he, like, consciously decided to keep it. Yeah, I mean, even a line about, like, him just being, like, 
oh damn like i was just leaving it there for like further experimentation down the line really lucky that that like saved my ass like that, even like that would have been like okay like at least there's like a reason given for like why like he didn't just like you know like he's like oh man there's still some rock on there. Like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, like I, I i don't know like um but it didn't ruin anything for me but like i didn't even really notice it until you guys brought it up and then and thinking about it now it's like huh like <laughs> it is pretty convenient but whatever like clearly it didn't didn't really affect my enjoyment that much yeah and then uh like they had to like you know make Tsukasa's like m you know like killing him believable and there's really not a way to escape the world's strongest primate so it had to yeah. be like something uh very very lucky i guess um and then he set the stage a little bit with the rubbing the neck but i'm like okay like i don't think yeah. i would associate you rubbing your neck to oh dude if I had to kill you I'm gonna go for your neck because you're rubbing it so much <laughs> was a weak weird can we talk weird. about how strong Sukasa was because he literally like wakes up and immediately like, beats up three lions and then <laughs> they shoot a crossbow at him he catches it out of midair like this guy is insane and they, I don't think they explain like I mean maybe there's a backstory in the manga like how he gets insanely strong like that but there's no like powers or anything behind it maybe. Well, the isn't world's he like, strongest like a fighter or something? Isn't well, he yeah, like he's a trick? fighter, but the best fighters in the world, right? I mean, it's obvious it's an anime, but nobody's going to be able to take down three lions or catch a crossbow bolt out of midair, like, <laughs> efficiently. I mean, there are probably people that can catch a crossbow bolt. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know about, about that. <laughs> he was so strong. Recently. He uh, is really strong. But I, mean, I don't know. It's, just, it, it, it's anime. I don't know. It, it brought, I, when I was watching, especially the crossbow scene, I, whenever I was watching that, I immediately thought back to like Griffin's thoughts on like the previous two animes, or, like explanation of where the powers come from. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's not like a huge thing because like they're more believable than a lot of other things. But Twitter. Oh, at least yeah. the thing they also, don't they don't offer any explanation, which is like honestly like a bit better than a half-assed one. So I wouldn't be maybe so critical of it because there's still room to explain how he got this strong and like what if he has like superhuman abilities, which he clearly does, like how he attained them. So I'm I hopefully they throw in some kind of explanation because that would help a lot. But at the end of the day, it's an anime. So yeah, and it, it, it's it's sort of like rule of cool stuff, you know? Like yeah, it's definitely. cool. It, it doesn't matter like that. There's not really that much of an explanation. And, and I mean, if it was more of a focus of the show, like if it was like the Tsukasa story yeah. and it was all about him, then it would be like, and it was just about him, like constantly one upping his past self. And like now he beat up like three lions and a couple tigers. And it was just like, that was the show. I'd be like, okay, <laughs> yeah. But, um, like, if, you know, if he was doing it, this every a episode. small part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, kind of a small thing, but I really like how in depth they went with the science. Like they didn't shy away from the depth behind it. And I'm a material science major, and they got a lot of material stuff, like really in depth. And I thought I was like, the, like my inner nerd came out, and I was like, wow, this is the coolest stuff. And like I'm sure, like there's a lot of stuff they cover. Like if you're a botany person, like I'm sure the plant stuff is like super interesting. But I don't know, just the depth that they went into, and the fact that they didn't shy away. from I love yeah. how they had the explanation with like the bomb, and they're like, "Hey, this is an actual recipe for a bomb. Yeah. Please yeah. do not make this <laughs> recipe." How to make gunpowder, just like homemade. Yeah. Um, but like, okay, what's what was thick? Like, I, I love, yeah, I mean, I love how it's presented, like, kind of like how it's like showing the reader or like the the viewer or whatever, like how to like do it. Um, and I think that's really cool, like that it's not because if it wasn't like that, then it would just sort of feel like, oh, like Senku, like. He, like knew how to do it and then he just sort of like went behind the curtain like did his science <laughs> and then came out with a bomb haha -ha. but it's like you have to like oh shit like like this is like you, you know you actually see like the materials that go into it like and you know if you're keeping track you're like oh like this is a material that they like need to get yeah. um or this is a material that they've already have you could definitely keep track of that um and yeah i think that's i think that's cool also like just like there was like uh, a part in like the manga where it, you know like at the at the end of a chapter or whatever they were like, um, we are going to like skip a week, like we're taking a break next week to collect research material. So like they were actually like doing the research on like how they would like need to like like what the science behind this plot point that they wanted to introduce yeah. like actually was. Like I thought that was sick when they, when uh, they when I just saw that. I was like, yeah. Wait, was this in Shonen Jump? Yeah. How did they get away with that? 
I thought Shonen Jump was really strict on like deadlines and publishing. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, you could take a break. Like, I mean, Doctor Stone is also like one of the more popular newer ones. So, um, don't have it, it all depends on your popularity, I think. In terms of how strict else to they talk are. About, I really liked the soundtrack, not just the openings, but like throughout the like the show. Like, there was like a specific like uh, music that they used whenever they, like they were doing the science. And that got me like it was like really hype music. Like it got me really good. It was like I think it starts off with like drums or like, like almost like primal instruments, and then it like escalates, and it's really cool. Both plus both the openings are really uh really good. Um, Good Morning Second World. Second one's amazing. And, yeah, Good Morning <laughs> World, and what's the other one called? What's the uh, soundtrack for the manga, like how? <laughs> I mean, I've I watched the anime. I I I, I just read the manga more recently. I'm like joking. I watched the anime I'm like uh, I don't know the be- the end of last year, the beginning of this year. So, uh, but yeah, uh, Good Morning World and Primary Colors is the name of the, the second OP. They're both really like I really like them. I like definitely like the second one better. But I thought I, I th- apparently they won an award. Can't remember. It was some website award. Maybe it was Country Rolls award for uh best soundtrack 2019 it's some like um, hip-hop in there too I'd, like, yeah they had, some, they had some like rapping at some point so that was that worked weirdly well um it was it I, was like, a I little like distracting part. somehow i'm like trying to like oh yeah, yeah i'm yeah, like, like this hip-hop and then i'm I, hearing audio and i'm like okay i think <laughs> when they're on the beach the episode where they're on the beach with susaka and he's or Tsukasa, and he's telling them about like his grand plan of like killing all the old people or whatever. I think there was rap during that part, and it was really distracting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't really like it when they do like vocal tracks in the background of characters talking. It's like, yeah. why? But why? other than that, <laughs> I'm trying to look at the character talk. Other than that, the soundtrack I thought was excellent, and, and then, that's something I like to keep an eye out. For and the the vocalist for the big titty mommy uh, astronaut oh, yeah, 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 lady. Yeah very good like that yeah. moment when he played the record uh oh my from his dad, God, that, that was a very very touching moment i like that yeah. moment a lot i did think some of the time she was like singing like oh she was singing on the space station that was some of that was a little weird but it was fine the, the singing itself was really good. any other hot takes about the show we're at about 52 i'll oh, go for it Tom. Talk about like just the general. No, I was just gonna animation. say just that I really love it. Me too. Great uh, show. Um, the animation itself was really good. I liked a lot of the the freeze frames, like the animated silly faces were really funny. No CG. I didn't see any CG. I saw a little CG, but not a lot. Not any that I noticed. Maybe yeah, exactly. Some, but I have big the good eyes. kind. That's yeah. the good kind. That's how you know it's good. That CG, bro. Um. Uh, I guess we. I love the uh, character designs. Character designs was great, very unique. Yeah. I like the old man quite a bit. Leakhead, thank you. Celery. Yeah, I like how the, yeah they're all very like pink and good, and the girls are very hot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good quality. You know, for <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, freaking Sid the Sloth. Her eyes were like ten meters apart. <laughs> <laughs> Kohaka. She Is literally is Sid the sloth, sloth. Yeah, she's like the main like warrior girl. Yeah. Oh, I got an idea. Yeah. I mean, the uh, eyes are kind of far apart and big, uh, but I don't know. I like I like the art style uh, overall. I thought you the know girls the, were the guy who the draws manga. the art for the manga, like so, like the guy who like character designs are based off of and shit. He used to draw porn, I think. Yeah, really? <laughs> uh, I was looking. Wait, really? I was looking into the. I was on the subreddit after watching. Like, I just go generally when I finish an anime, I go through the subreddit. Like, one of their top posts is like. Uh, apparently the guy that draws the anime like used to do hentai, and he's like, let's get some official stuff out there, bud. <laughs> yeah. He definitely doesn't do it anymore, because, yeah. you know, now he's like an official boy who, like, draws for Shonen Jump and shit. I mean, you yeah. can but still tell, though. He's some, a of the, yeah. some of the... <laughs> he could, he, yeah, he could definitely just... Oh, yeah, dude, like, some of, like, the... Oh, the... Wait, uh, there's a picture I need to send. Hold on, I'm gonna send it. <laughs> that, that makes sense, though, because I thought the manga, the, the girls were hotter in the manga art than I thought they were in the animation. Oh, yeah, I mean, just in general, I think that the manga art is, like, better, but, like, that's fair, because, like, with the anime, you have to draw way more drawings yeah. to convey the same amount of ideas. Like, so it's just yeah. inevitable that you're gonna, going to get a downgrade, and I feel like for like for this like the downgrade was a lot less than a lot of other manga to anime uh 
ad- adaptations that I've seen. Because so. I was uh, I was reading the manga for Mob Psycho a bit. I didn't finish the end, but uh, I think that the anime looks better than the manga art. Yeah, well, that that's like one who like basically okay. like can't draw. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> oh uh, yeah, Jesus. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, his drawings are basically like. I mean, I, I, I maybe he's gotten better, but like the the panels that like when I, I was in threads, like when One Punch Man was coming out, what people would show because like what One Punch Man did like this the route of like it started out as because it's just a web comic. Like One Punch Man and Mob Psycho are like they they don't actually get published in magazines. They're just like web comics. But then One Punch Man was popular enough that it got a manga adaptation of the webcomic um, that's drawn by, like, this guy who, like, has done other stuff, and he's, like, really talented. So, like, the art in the manga is really good, but the webcomic is, like, shit. Um, so, like, people would do, do, like, comparison frames, like, for One Punch Man, where they would show, like, the gif of, like, some, you know, like, a, a really crazy punch or something, and they would show it in the anime, and they would show it, like, in, like, the manga, and it would, like, look just as good, and they would show it in, like, a webcomic, and it would basically just be, like, just a slightly better than like a stick figure like blowing the fuck out of another stick yeah. <laughs> it was like really like just like not good that's funny <laughs> but but i think I, I think he's probably gotten better over time but i don't know you know boss that picture you sent is that porn <laughs> no that's from the anime that's no, from the anime no. oh yeah yeah this uh, is oh. epic oh wait yeah, can i no, i just want to make sure oh, yeah i just want to make sure i can it's not porn. Okay. you can put it on the screen yeah, it's yeah. not come it's penicillin Oh, okay. kind of soon, yeah. Wow, yeah. She's she's just taking your medicine, bro. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely like it, it, this same. There, there was the same like drawing in like a panel in the manga. So, Thank it's God. definitely from yeah. his she's from his background. Really, she's really good at taking penicillin. <laughs> yeah. Um, it does look like a like a jalapeno pepper. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh yeah, it really does. <laughs> like, like it doesn't really look like it's it's like concave or whatever. It's yeah. Like, like a thing. <laughs> Alright. If no one else has any hot takes, I guess I'm gonna start the conclusion of the uh, sure, yeah. series. I will give my rating. I thought about it a bit, and I really, really like the science element. I really like the world. I really like Senku. Uh, I'd give this, like, a hot 9 to a 10. I don't know where, obviously. I gave Mob Psycho a 9.9. But uh, there were just some things that I thought were, like, exceptional, exceptional. I think everything uh, in um, Dr. Stone, I think, is, like, pretty, pretty good. Um, I'll give it some more from a 9 to a 10. There's really not a lot of shortcomings, which I think is really crazy for a show. There's not a lot of things that I could say negative about this show, other than, like, maybe a few things about the pacing and, like, how much they're really... uh, letting us know about the other groups in terms of that. I'd like to know a little bit more maybe about Sokka or Taiju, uh, but the art's really good, the story's really good, this element of science is just like so cool. No other anime does this, and uh, it's really refreshing to see... That you know about. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but it's really refreshing to see that element of like hard work, and um, uh, we saw that again in Mob Psycho, which is weird that we're doing them back-to-back because like I've never seen this really before. Uh, but I, yeah, I give it somewhere to a nine to a ten. I really, really like the show. I I could watch hundreds of episodes of this. Yeah, I would also give it a nine. I love the show. Um, pretty much like a lot of what you said. Like, not a lot of flaws with the show. Um, yeah, it's like there's some nitpicks, but also a lot of the things that you guys brought up as like negatives, like do like or or, or at least like open questions, like do get addressed like later on in the manga. I didn't want to like say anything at the time. Don't want to like spoil you guys on shit. But um, especially after reading the manga, like I definitely feel very comfortable giving this a nine. Um, and I just, yeah, I just the fact that it's so like solid and good and like enjoyable to watch, like on a moment to moment level, and that it just like appeals to like the inner science nerd in me. Um, faith, I love it. Yeah, I'd probably give it a nine as well. Uh, well, maybe like a little bit higher, nine nine point one. Three. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just mean somewhere in the nine range. I, I don't really want to like fuck around with decimals, really. But yeah, I'll give it a nine. I'll give it a. Wait, actually, I'll give it a. What does he always say? Uh, ten billion percent. Yeah. Yeah, ten billion. I saw somebody say that that's annoying, and I thought I didn't find it annoying at all. It's like catchphrase. Of- kind of a cute catchphrase. I think, yeah, I don't really find Senku that annoying. Mostly, I think he's good. 
Um, for me, right, right after I watched it, I put it on my mouth and I gave it a 10 out of 10. Um, but on, like realistically, probably like a nine and a half, like after I thought about it a bit more, um, like it's still like probably one of the better animes, like top, like, you know, top five, top 10, definitely, um, that I've seen. And, uh, it was just really enjoyable overall. Yeah. Um, I would definitely probably give this a, a nine as well. Um, it's just, it's one of those animes you could just like sit there and binge all day and really enjoy it. And, uh, I think the whole science part of it makes it so unique that it's just, I, when I think of it, like, I, I know you mentioned Mob Psycho, but I haven't seen that. But when I think of like Dr. Stone, I can't think of any other animes that really are similar to it. Yeah, I mean, just the message is similar, I would say. And if you like Dr. Stone, I definitely recommend checking out Mob Psycho. There's just, like, a really strong underlying uh, sense of, like, you have to work hard to achieve your goals. And I feel like both of these shows share that sentiment, so I'd recommend it. Also, the sentiment of it's it okay to rely on other people. That as well, for sure. Yeah, yeah that too. And just, like, the, the never-ending grind of, like progress, like, progress. Like, it's not like, you know, you reach your goal and then you've 100% succeeded exactly what you wanted to do. It's like an everyday routine that constantly needs to be grinded out. And uh, I think both of us should show that. Um, unless anybody else has anything they want to say. Nope. Uh, that's it. That's, that's it for the anime soiree. Bye, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>